Well, fresh off his support for same-sex marriage, the president is in a fundraising frenzy. Just coincidental to Republican presidential candidate, Governor Mitt Romney. Governor, good to have you. Thank you, Neil. Good to join you. Um, he is raising a lot of money by one account, a million dollars in 90 minutes, Governor. Uh, likely $15 million tonight at George Clooney's house. A lot of his uh, base coming out even stronger since this decision. Are you getting anything like that uh, from, from your folks? Uh, you know, I don't think the, uh, the matter of marriage is really a, a, a fundraising matter, either for the president. It certainly is not for me. Uh, I, I don't know what our, our figures look like. Uh, we just had a fundraiser here in Omaha, Nebraska. It was very successful. Uh, have another one scheduled for Kansas City this afternoon. That'll be successful as well, I'm told. Uh, but uh, I, I hope uh, the issue, uh, as tender and sensitive as the marriage issue is, uh, is not a, a source of, uh, of fundraising for, for either of us. Well, it's obviously galvanized the president's base and a lot of uh, you know, gay Americans who have liked the president, who have been bitter that he hasn't been more strongly supportive of gay marriage, have now really uh, thrown in their support wallet-wise. Are you worried that's going to come to your disadvantage, though? You know, I, I don't know that there's a calculation about you know, which positions are going to help and which positions are going to hurt politically. I, I think you have positions. You describe what they are. Uh, uh, hopefully people are focusing on the major issues of the day, which relate to uh, our economy, getting people back to work, uh, dealing with Syria, hopefully getting Syria to pry apart from its uh, relationship with Iran and get rid of uh, Assad, uh, keeping Iran from becoming nuclear. Are, are, these are the issues I hear about day in and day out, this, the sense that we're spending and borrowing too much money. But I know for many people the issue of marriage is going to be a defining issue, and, and they'll make the decision on that basis. That's their right. Uh, but you don't change your positions to, uh, to try and win uh, uh, states or, uh, or certain subgroups of Americans. You, you have the positions you have. And as you know, uh, for a long time, I think from the beginning of my political career, I've made it very clear that I believe marriage should be a relationship between a man and a woman. Uh, and I know other people have differing views, but that's my view. President, in an attack ad that's already out now, Governor, maybe in response to and a quick follow-up from this decision yesterday, that you've been all over the map on this issue, that uh, you, you are against civil unions, you've said this is a state issue, uh, then you've said that maybe it's the federal government that should handle it through a constitutional amendment, protecting marriage between a man and a woman. What, what is your, your firm position? Well, thank you uh, for any confusion that's there. Let me make it very clear, which is that my preference would be to have a national standard to define marriage as a relationship between a man and a woman. That would then allow states to determine what rights would be provided for people uh, of the same gender that wanted to have a relationship. Uh, there could be domestic partnership benefits, for instance, where one state might decide to provide hospital visitation rights. Another state might decide to provide that as well as benefits of other kinds. States could have their own decisions with regards to the domestic partnership rights. But my preference would be to have a national standard for marriage and that marriage we defined as big being between a man and a woman. Gays it quickly interpret that governor as being discriminatory to them and that a president, Romney, would etch in the Constitution something that discriminates against a, a large swath of people in this country, gays. What do you say? You know, we uh, as a society uh, take action which we believe uh, strengthens the, the nation. I happen to believe that the best setting for raising a child is where there's the opportunity for a mom and a dad to be uh, in the home. I know there are many circumstances where that's not possible uh, through death or divorce. Uh, I also know many gay couples are able to adopt children. That's fine. Uh, but, uh, but my preference is that we encourage the marriage of a man and a woman and that we continue to define marriage as a relationship between a man and a woman. Some have likened this too, sort of like the civil rights movement all over again, and that the gays uh, push for rights. Uh, it's very analogous. What do you say? Uh, you know, I don't see it in that light. Uh, I, I, I believe that uh, my record as a person who has supported civil rights is strong and, and, uh, and powerful. Uh, at the same time, I believe that marriage has been defined the same way for literally thousands of years by virtually every civilization in history, and that, uh, and that marriage is literally by its definition a relationship between a man and a woman. And that if, uh, if two people of the same gender want to live together 
uh, want to have a loving relationship and even want to adopt a child in my state. Uh, uh, individuals of the same sex were able to adopt children. Uh, in, in my view, that's something which people have the right to do. But to call that marriage uh, uh, is, in my view, a, 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 a departure for the r real meaning of that word. The president yesterday, uh, Governor, said that he was persuaded to this view because he had talked to his family, talked to his daughters. I, I wonder if you talked to Ann about this. Does she concur with you, your wife? Uh, your your sons, your grandchildren are are they all on the same page? Uh, I actually believe, despite the fact that I have a pretty big family, yes, we're all on the same page on this. I know Ann is, of course. Uh, you know, as I go across the country, um, I know that even with my party, there are people who have different views on this uh, at this point. Uh, and recognize the Republican Party does not consist of people who all have the same views on all the issues. And this is an issue which uh, you can't really uh, convince someone about. It's, it's something which you either believe one way or the other. It's uh, very much like the issue of life. And, and, uh, and we come down on different sides of this issue after giving it careful thought and consideration. I respect the, the right of the president to reach the conclusion he has. And, and I presume he respects my right to, uh, to hold to the position that I've had uh, uh, from the beginning of this topic being raised. Um, another topic that was raised, and its timing might have been just coincidental, but this front page story of today's Washington Post, going back some 50 years almost, to when you were uh, in prep school, and a certain hazing incident which uh, against a suspected homosexual student, and that you uh, led that hazing incident. Um, I guess the kid had dyed his hair blonde, you and some buddies didn't like it, you forcibly pinned him to a table, cut his hair. Um, you've heard the story, you know the story, it's out there. Any, any comment on it? Well, first of all, uh, I had no idea what uh, that individual's sexual orientation might be. Uh, going back to the 1960s, that wasn't something that uh, we all discussed or considered. Uh, so that's, uh, that's simply just not accurate. I, I don't recall the incident myself, but I've, I've seen the reports and uh, not going to argue with that. Uh, uh, there's no question but that uh, I did some stupid things when I was in high school. And obviously, if I hurt uh, anyone by virtue of that, I, I would be very sorry for it and apologize for it. Uh, have you heard from any of the, the players? I know the, the then uh, teenager in question has now since passed away. I think he died in 2004. But you, you, have you heard from any of the ones who might have participated in this with you? No, I haven't. Okay. Uh, I could switch gears a little bit because many are looking at this entire issue, Governor, as being an enormous distraction, um, maybe deliberately planted, that is what uh, House Speaker John Boehner said, to get the attention away from the economy. Do you think that's the case? Well, I think you're going to find uh, throughout this campaign season uh, that the president's team will be doing everything in their, po in their power to try and hold up various shiny objects. Uh, many of them will be with regards to me, some will be with regards to the president's policies or, or promises of some new major giveaway. Uh, all these things designed to take people's eye off the ball, which is the massive deficit this president has put in place, his inability to develop our energy resources in this country, uh, his Obamacare, which is not attractive at all to the American people, and an economy which is stumbling along, which should have recovered a long time ago, and as a result, a lot of people are out of work. Uh, th those are the things I hear about. When I'm, when I'm campaigning day in and day out and taking questions from people uh, on the rope line in small meetings and, and in town halls, it, it's the economy which is the focus of what they're talking about. And obviously the president doesn't want to talk about that. Um, you've been talking a lot, and why you, one of the reasons why you're in Nebraska today, you've been all over in that regional oil-rich region of the country. You've been talking a lot about the, the energy situation, gas prices have been climbing and all that. But over the last, you know, almost three weeks now, they've been sliding. Gas prices are going the other way. And, and uh, Democrats have been saying it's because the president started targeting speculators, jawboning about oil companies. And he's the reason why they're coming down. What do you say? <laughs> well, uh, I think his explanation a couple of weeks ago when they were going up was it was all because of the speculators. Right. So I guess now he wants to credit the speculators for them coming down. Uh, look, energy prices are driven by supply and demand, uh, and, and that's, uh, that's as it has been. It's as it's going to be in the future. And the truth is that the president has restricted supply development in this country by holding off drilling in the Gulf, by holding off drilling in the Outer Continental Shelf, uh, by holding off drilling in Anwar. 
uh, of course, by threatening the supply of natural gas, by talking about uh, uh, the federal government regulating fracking, stopping the, uh, the, the pipeline, Keystone Pipeline from Canada. Look, he, he is doing almost everything he can to make it harder to develop energy resources in here. And we're going to be paying for this in the years ahead. And, uh, and, and the reality is we have more oil production in this country today by virtue of decisions that were made long ago, including by his predecessor. He, he has cut back the number of licenses and permits on federal land by over half. And, and so he deserves no bow uh, for the fact that energy prices now and then come down. I sure hope they come down, but it's not because of his policies. Well, you know, they've been uh, jumping ugly on you. That is Democrats as well, uh, Governor, or your comments that you should... Uh uh, take part of the credit for the auto industry comeback and, and the auto bailout success. The president termed it an etch-a-sketch moment for you. Former Michigan Governor Jennifer Granholm said that you knifed us in the back for taking the auto rescue credit. D what, what were you really saying there? Because I, I, my sorry. memory serves me. You, no, were, I, you I, were dead set against that rescue. You no, know, here, here was what I said, and, and it's, it's written down in an op-ed where you can take a good look at it. This was when the auto executives went to Detroit, excuse me, went to Washington, flew down there in right. their company planes, and said they needed a bailout. And I wrote an op-ed, this was back when George Bush was president, and I said, don't write them a check. They need to go through a managed bankruptcy. They have to get rid of the excess costs of the UAW and other excess costs. And then the government can help support. But, but don't write them a check. And, and, and I know the head of the UAW, uh, he said that's absolutely wrong. These companies can go through bankruptcy. It would never work. But you know what? That's finally what happened. The president finally came around and they went through a managed bankruptcy and now they're back on their yeah, feet. Yeah, but they went through so, a managed uh, bankruptcy I, I, I with a lot of taxpayer dollars. That's where, I, were you trying to draw the distinction there? Because Mark Zandi of Moody's um, said without all those taxpayer dollars backing up the bailout, uh, the bankruptcy filing that was pretty much, as you said, the case, would have never been possible. In other words, a bankruptcy filing alone, these guys still would have been in deep doo-doo. Do you agree with that? Well, what I said at the time was, in, in that op-ed, I said as they go into bankruptcy, if government support is needed, if the government, for instance, has to provide guarantees, then that's something I would be open to. Uh, obviously, we don't want to have the auto industry uh, liquidated, go out of business. And I was on Fox and, uh, and also on uh, Meet the Press and other places talking about this. We, we're not going to have the industry go out of business, but it needed to go through bankruptcy to get rid of those excessive costs before the government support would, uh, would kick in. And frankly, we spent, uh, I don't know, a couple, I think $20 billion dollars uh, before the president finally decided to let the companies go into bankruptcy. That's what he should have done from the very beginning. Uh, if you don't mind my getting a little personal, uh, Governor, you know, uh, it wasn't that long ago your wife, Ann Romney, uh, was under attack by many Democratic strategists, famously Hillary Rosen, who said she never worked a day in her life. Now, I know she has spoken to, uh, I've spoken to her, of course, and, and she will be speaking to my colleague Martha McCallum on this subject. Uh, you were in sense, but, but reservedly so in your response to this. Why? Um, you know, I, I guess I save my, uh, my, uh, my energy and anger uh, <laughs> and, uh, and try and be a bit more measured. I, I yeah, think but this Anne was your wife they were talking herself. about. You know, this was, they were saying some really outlandish things. And did you as just a husband say, wait a minute? Yeah, of course. I mean, I, I you know, <laughs> Look, Anne is, Anne is not only the person I love, she's my hero. She's my life hero. She's an extraordinary fighter. Uh, she did one of the most difficult things you can do in America, which is she raised five boys and raised them well, and they're good husbands and fathers themselves. It's an extraordinary thing, and, and she gets the credit for that. And, and, uh, and she did that, by the way, uh, shortly thereafter with, with disease MS affecting her and ultimately breast cancer. Uh, she's helping raise grandkids. Actually, just yesterday, she spent seven hours holding our, our two new grandchildren, uh, twins. Congratulations. Uh, she's an amazing Congratulations, woman. Congratulations, by the way. Yeah, 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 thank you. But, you know, I, I know that there are some, uh, uh, some people who don't understand the, the, uh, the kind of role she's had. And uh, I, I try and, and not worry too much about what other people say. Does it bug you, though, on the campaign trail itself um, that you're portrayed as just not hit? You can't sing. You've said yourself you're not cool. The president's cool. He, he can sing. It almost makes you wonder whether you need a hip or cool running mate. 
<laughs> I think I can sing. Come on, Neil. <laughs> well, you're better than me, I'll, I'll but be then again, everyone off. is. Look, but you know that that I'll, comes up do, again, be, and that's what you're up I'll against. Do a, I'll do a, I'll do a, I'll do a sing off, you know, and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I'll, uh, I, I don't think I'll play the president around a golf, but I'll be happy to take him through a water ski course. Uh, I mean, we have different, uh, different skills and different interests and different hobbies. Uh, I must admit that my kids and my grandkids are my hobby and, uh, and consume a lot of my interest and attention. But uh, people are going to get to know me better. And, uh, you know, Ann says there's a wild and crazy guy locked up inside of me. <laughs> she has uh, said that, right. Now and then I let him out. All yeah. right. Uh, but, but I guess to the point, I did actually have a serious point about whether your running mate should be counter to at least your image. You're sort of buttoned down, very serious, uh, you know, th this corporate guy. And then maybe your running mate should be a little younger, a little looser. Uh, maybe uh, a Marco Rubio comes to mind. What, what do you think? I don't know if you're available, uh, Neil, but... Uh... <laughs> I, I, I can't appreciate sing. the input. Can't sing. Fra Fra We're doomed. <laughs> I can't sing. Okay. Frankly, frankly, I think I think what the American people uh, would look for in a vice president is someone who they believe could be president if that were, were necessary, and uh, and that's probably the, the quality that's most important. Uh, very quickly and very finally, Governor, uh, there's a distinction in some of the polls that show how registered voters feel versus most likely voters. Our Dick Morris has been looking at this most likely voter type polling that shows you doing much better in, 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 uh, among that group that is, again, most likely to show up at the polls, we're told, um, and that you could be uh, doing markedly better than the media officially says. Now, you and your guys crunch these numbers. Is that the case? Is, is your data telling you that? You know, that's uh, that's encouraging. I, I had not heard that. Um, I, I don't look at a lot of polls, to be honest, Neil, because I happen to know that six months out, they really don't tell you much of anything. It's uh, it's going to be very different between now and November. Uh, my guess is at some point I'll lead. At some point he'll lead, uh, probably by a lot in both directions. Uh, but at the final analysis, I expect the American people are going to say, who is it? that will make sure that we have an America that creates the kind of jobs and the rising incomes that we need and that our kids need and that can slay this deficit beast. And I can, and he can't, and I've proven that, and he's proven that he can't. So I think that's how I win. Governor Romney, thank you for taking the time. We appreciate it. Thanks, Neil. Good to be with you. Governor.